Hello, happy new year. It is now 2023. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lizelle Sambri. Um, I talk all about things like my traditional publishing journey and like other stuff about traditional publishing. And so yeah, this is the first writing vlog of the year. Um, it encompasses the whole month of January and you will be seeing it in February based on how I do schedules. But very exciting. Um, this month I have a few things to work on, but like the big project that <laughs> I'm working on this month is doing the proposal for my trio of horror stories. So I have a video, I'll link it down below, where I talk all about my writing, my writing projects and goals and plans for 2023 and like things I've worked on in 2022. But my biggest goal of 2023 is um, completing this proposal to submit to my publisher as my option. So in traditional publishing, you have an option. So it's part of your kind of book deal contract. And it basically just means that you show your publisher the first thing that you have next. Um, usually it's kind of limited to age category. So for me, I'm showing my publisher my next young adult project. And so that's what this is. It's a series of young adults standalone horror novels well kind of horror thriller novels but we'll we'll piece that together later um and so what I'm essentially doing is I need to write a synopsis and the first six chapters of the first book and then I'll also do kind of a short synopsis of the next two books that's not strictly necessary but I'd like to do it just kind of to kind of give them a better idea of that and so I need to get that all done I need to do a rough draft of that this month and I also need to polish it this month because I need to be able to send it to my agent at the end of the month so that she can take a look at it in February and so that we can kind of go back and forth with the kind of ideal timing of having the proposal ready to show to my publisher at the beginning of March. And so that's a plan. <laughs> it's kind of a bit of a, a quick schedule, but it's a proposal and proposals do take less time to complete. Um, and also this is kind of, I've already been thinking about these stories for a while. And so I have a good idea of what I'm doing. I just need to kind of like get it down and like do the nitty gritty. And I think really the biggest, the bulk of the work I'm going to be doing for this is really going to be the plotting because in order to write a synopsis, I have to fully plot the book and I think that's going to be the heaviest lifting portion of this is just getting that plotted because like writing a synopsis I'm basically just taking my plot points and doing a short a shortened kind of synopsis of everything that's going on and like that's something I feel very much I can do no problem and then um the actual drafting of the six chapters like I feel like that's also not going to be a problem. So for six chapters, it'll be kind of like 11,000 to 12,000 words, um, which is something that I can also draft like quite quickly. And I feel like I'm once I have it plotted, I'm confident with my ability to draft. And then it's kind of just editing that all together. And then, you know, later on in February, working on those edits with my agent. So I feel confident that this is something I can get ready this month. Um, I think it just feels fast because, you know, it's a proposal. And so it goes a little bit faster. Um, I did the proposal for Bear Hunt, which is my 2024 book also quite quickly. Um, so they don't take a ton of time, but it's, it's a little bit stressful because that's the thing that your publisher will Look at and decide whether or not they're gonna buy <laughs> the books based on so it's a little bit stressful but I'm trying not to think about that whole part of the process and just focus on getting the proposal done so I have to do that um, I also have to do my final round of past pages for the he-man book so I'm writing a book in the tales of Eternia series so it's the third book in the series following Tila and so we just need to do the final past pages for that and I believe those are coming to me in January and then my last thing I have to do in January is um, the one of the short story anthologies I'm in which hasn't been announced yet but I've talked about it on the channel it's like a middle grade um, sci-fi is like my story that I have in there and so I have to do my developmental edits for that by the end of the month and I'm <laughs> also on top of everything I am kind of thinking that maybe my edits my next round of developmental edits for bear hunt which is my 2024 book i'm not sure if those are going to come to me in january or in february so i'm kind of like 
being aware that those might come in January. Uh, so um, those are all the things I have to do. I think though the short story anthology edits and the past pages I think are things that I can do relatively quickly so I'm not too worried about those overlapping. I think I'm really just worried about like overlapping if I have to do bear hunt edits too because then that'll be quite a bit of work. But um yeah we'll see we'll see what all happens there but yeah that's what this vlog is gonna be encompassing um and uh, yeah 2023 we're in 2023 i have a book coming out next month which is very wild to say but i have a book coming out next month delicious monsters which is a ya psychological thriller slash horror so um right now i'm so focused on like getting this proposal done i'm really doing my very best to not even think about it <laughs> the book I have coming out because I'm like I gotta get this proposal ready and we gotta get this you know um squirreled away because in February I know I'm not gonna have a lot of time and so I'll have enough time to kind of edit the proposal but like the bulk of the work the whole of the work really needs to be done this month so yeah that's uh where we're gonna be following along and I will see you at the end of the week I couldn't fall asleep again Been overthinking all the little things I've said I'm sleep deprived almost every night And I wish that I wouldn't think instead I know the sun is up and I got things to do But I don't think I've got the energy to move And I go back to my dreams again But I shouldn't be sleeping when It's daylight now and I'm stuck in my bed Daylight now and I'm stuck in my head Cause I Hello, it is Friday. As you can see, I've had some little changes in my office, which I'm very, very excited about because now I have so much storage and all the little things that I used to keep on top of my desk that like made it really cluttered and messy now have shelves to put them in and I have spots for them and it's great. I'm very excited about it. I feel like my office feels so clean now. <laughs> which I'm really enjoying. So that was great. Um, I'd originally not planned to do that all during the week, but then I just like, I really wanted to do it and now it's done and I'm extremely excited about it. So that's great. And then writing wise, I have, so this week what I did was I did all the Save the Cat beats for uh, this book. <laughs> and then I did, I planned out all the chapters which was really the hardest and the most labor intensive part. I find that to be the most difficult part, just like planning what's gonna happen in each chapter. And that's the dog. Okay, now that Bobo is back in from playing with her friend, <laughs> um, as I was saying, yes, the planning the chapters is the most labor intensive part of the plotting process for me. So I'm glad to have gotten that done. And then I finally planned out all the subplots, um, which is great. So what I have left to do plotting wise is I need to plan out all the character arcs, for the um, kind of companion characters, I need to plan out the B-plot arc. Um, I need to plan out the little hints that I have to drop. I need to plan out the red herrings. Um, and then I need to plan out this sort of interconnected thing. So the concept for this trio of horror stories is that they are interconnected. And so I need to <laughs> add that interconnected piece to the book um, while still maintaining the feeling of a standalone. Um, so I kind of have put in another layer to plan that out separately to make that happen because I do want people to feel like they read the book and it's like it stood alone and they are getting like the whole full story and then if they read the other books in the series they could be like oh that's what was going on in this book um but also you don't need to read them in order or read the same ones like you could read it and enjoy it as a full standalone is my <laughs> goal for this whole thing and so um 
that is basically what I have planned out now. I don't know if I've talked at a length about like what this particular first book is about, um, but it's, you know, it's about a group of girls where they've recently kind of had a friendship breakup with one of the girls and they've kind of been brought back together by that girl's older sister who used to babysit them all. Um, she's won this kind of like fancy night out in downtown Toronto and so she's trying to get the girls back together and to like have them be friends with her sister again and so she says please come please come have this night out in Toronto and like try and smooth over what's going on between all of you. Um, but when they get there, a bunch of very sinister things go down and some of the reasons for why their friendship splintered start to come to light in a very unsettling way. So <laughs> that is the book. Um, I won't say the title. What should I call it? I I'll, <laughs> Should I call it like, I was like, oh, I should think of like a hashtag for this. I don't really know. I'm just calling the whole thing the horror trio because it's a proposal and I'm proposing it this way. And so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. But that's the planned first book in the trio. So um, that's what I have there. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to have had gotten so much of it planned out. Like I feel like I have a really good full idea of what's going to be going on in this book because now I have all the chapters planned, which is great. And so at this point, the plotting is really just like adding on all of those deep layers. So it feels like a deep multi-layered story, um, the way that I like my um, young adult stories to feel. Um, I want it to feel like it's got a lot of layers and a lot of depth and things like that. So um, that's kind of just like where I'm getting at at this point with like planning out all these additional things because right now the characters who are not the main character are feeling very flat um, and so I when I plan out their character arcs in like a more in-depth way I know that'll bring them to life more and this will all contribute to me um, drafting something much more solid so I'm excited about that and that'll all be happening next week. Um, otherwise, what have I done? Uh, so I've got my past pages for He-Man, my final ones, so I'll be doing those next week. Um, and in some Bear Hunt news, um, Bear Hunt, which is going to be my 2024 YA horror thriller novel um, about a wealthy family that owns a needs-based school who the main character, um, the brother in that family has been recently accused of murder and has been let out on bail. Um, and a new murder happens and she's now grappling with did he do it or did he not? Um, so <laughs> that's Bear Hunt. And so the title needed to change. And me and my publisher have finally picked a title. Uh, I will not be saying it now. <laughs> I'm probably going to wait until the cover reveal. I have seen some very, very, very early cover sketches, but um, I'm getting a lot of input and like a uh, chance for feedback and things like that. So that's going to be exciting. So I'll probably just wait until the cover reveal to reveal the new title. But I picked the new title. <laughs> this has never happened for my YA so far. Um, we always end up changing the title, but usually my editor is the one who comes up with the title. So she came up with Blood Like Magic and Blood Like Fate and Delicious Monsters. But this time I came up with the title and it really was a collaborative effort because she came up with a bunch of stuff and I came up with a bunch of stuff and then there were a bunch of buzzwords and then the team, um, because she's communicating with the publishing team, there was one kind of word they really liked. And so we were trying to think of something to go with it that could use that word. And I came up with something and I was like, ooh, I really love this. And then my editor was like, ooh, I really like this too. And then she showed it to the team and they were all on board. So very exciting <laughs> to have uh, picked the title myself. Uh, so I'm very excited for it. I think it sounds very, very good. And I think it's going to sound very good alongside Delicious Monsters. And so it, Bear Hunt and Delicious Monsters are not connected. <laughs> they are two separate standalone books, but it's nice because they're under the same contract. It 
contract is kind of nice for them to feel like a pair so I'm really excited about that and that will be revealed at some point in the future whenever the cover is ready which is probably gonna be a while away but it's exciting to have thought of it um, and I'm gonna be doing edits on that I'm sure soon either this month or next month I honestly suspect that probably next week I'll get an email about doing these edits um, but I'm okay because the really hard bulk part of plotting for the horror trio I've already done so I feel like I'm in a good spot to be doing work on multiple projects in the next week because I've done the bulk of work that I needed to do um, so I'm feeling good about where the workload could go. I will also, if you had seen my, I'll link in the description below, I uh, talked about, you know, my end of the year wrap up and like my goals and things like, well, I talked about, there's two videos. There's an end of the year wrap up and then there's a writing project video. But in all of them, I talked about taking on less things um, and <laughs> may be excited to know that I've already been in the process of kind of a couple things came in and I really just didn't have the time or whatever to do them or felt that they would really pull on my time or make things difficult for me workload wise and I said no so I'm already doing well in like taking charge of my writing time <laughs> so yeah that's everything this update ended up being longer than I wanted it to be this was my second time filming it because I thought maybe it would be shorter but it's not but alas we move on and I will see you at the end of next week Always looking like a mess Only me I could go and do the press Give it a little more fit, I'll be set And I hope that you'll miss it I stay late now when it's stuck in my bed Day and night, never feel my best I know, oh well But this I know I'll be the same again. It's day and now and I'm stuck in my bed Day and now and I'm stuck in my head Cause I've been just a night all It is the middle of the week. It's Wednesday, but I figured I'd do an update um, because I've hit a sort of milestone point. <laughs> it feels like the better time to do an update. Um, but anyway, so I have finished doing a few things. So I finished all of the plotting. So I've done all the plotter bits and pieces that I needed to do um, and get done. So I have finished that bit. Um, I have also finished doing the rough draft of the synopsis because of course, now that I have everything plotted, I was able to look at all of that and just write it into a synopsis in like, just plain language. Um, I find synopses difficult because they're so dry and it just feels like this is the worst way to represent everything in the book. <laughs> and like, I almost wish I could just like send a polished version of my plotter file to explain, but that's not how it goes. You have to do a synopsis. And I just feel like for me, it's particularly challenging to feel like my story is entertaining or engaging or good by reading a synopsis of it. And when I say synopsis, I really, I don't mean like a blurb. I don't mean like what's at the back of the book where you open the book and you look at that. I think that much more resembles a pitch letter. And in fact, I've had pitch letters that have become um, kind of the final synopsis for the book with some little tweaks here and there. Um, so it's not the same. So this synopsis I'm talking about is a synopsis that's going to be like four to six pages long, though mine, of course, in classic Lizelle fashion is nine pages. <laughs> So I emailed my agent to see if that's okay if I, or if I'm going to need to cut it down. Um, but yeah, so it's a synopsis. It is filled with spoilers. The point is to spoil it and basically say everything that's going to happen in the book. Um, but to only pick out the kind of big important things and to kind of skimp out on little details, which I find particularly difficult when I'm writing a synopsis for something that's like a horror thriller because I have all of these elements of like red herrings and little hints and like things that are showing up and it's just like how am I supposed to get that in here I'm just like being like and then they discover and I'm like I actually 
I, you know, I build this up through the story, but it's hard to see in a synopsis. And it's also difficult for me to figure out which bits um, don't need to be in the synopsis and I can just cut out. And so that's why I've ended up in this situation where it's very long. Um, but it's not 10 pages. <laughs> Like, it could be longer. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes over. So, I've done the rough for that. And then I've also done a rough version, a rough draft of a pitch letter for what I imagine the second and the third book in this trio of horror thriller novels to be. Um, so, originally, I was going to do paragraph pitches for this. And then I emailed my agent and I was like, uh, should I do a paragraph? Or should I do like a full, like a pitch letter, like a full pitch for this? And she was like, well, if you have a good idea of it, it would be best to have like the full pitch. But she's like, if you don't <laughs> have that much of an idea, then let's, then the paragraph I think will be fine too. Um, and so me being a classic overachiever, I was like, I'm going to write a full pitch letter. So um, I worked out a lot of things in my head because <laughs> I really just have very rough ideas for these. Um, but I put together a pitch letter. I had to come up with character names for it. So I even have character names now. And so I put those together for those two books. And so that is everything I have right now. So I have the whole plotter thing done. I have a rough synopsis and I have two rough pitch letters for books two and three. And so what I have left to do now is just the drafting of the six chapters and then all the revising. <laughs> so I have to draft the first six chapters of the book. Um, so from here on out, I'm going to be drafting. So that's why I figured this was a good kind of stopping point because then I'm going to transition into doing drafting. Um, which, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so um, that's basically what I'm going to get into next. So yeah, that's kind of it for me. Um, I did uh, get some exciting news, but I can't share it. <laughs> but, um, it's exciting news. It, and it's blood like magic, blood like fate related. So look forward to that in the future when I'm able to share that. Um, and I also got to doing some like planning for like social media posts I want to make leading up to the release of Delicious Monsters. I also ordered some more postcards, though they didn't have the gold foil embossing option anymore. So I had to get just like a regular like gloss embossing, which I hope still looks nice. It's just like they don't know when they're going to have gold foil embossing in stock again and like I didn't want to run out when I was like traveling around doing stuff <laughs> she says vaguely because stuff hasn't been announced yet I didn't want to end up in that sort of position so I just got more so we will see how that goes but um that's basically everything and I will update you again um I guess after I've done the rough draft Blow this pop stand and get away. Flavors of cherry and lime. You wanna taste my sugar so damn sweet. Just like a starburst. Fill up a cup of my love. I'll quench your thirst. Temperature rising, fantasizing about me and you. So pull me closer like there's nobody else in the room. I have a poll for you. Let me know in the comments because I'm curious about this because I realize this is something that I regularly do and I don't know what is the actual preference of people. So let me know. One, so if I have something going on and it is exciting but secret so I can't tell you about it, what is, is your preference? One, 
that I say something exciting happened, but I can't tell you about it. Or two, that I just never mention it. <laughs> Please let me know what you think. I was thinking about this because I see tweets like this all the time where people are like, exciting, vague publishing tweet. And I know it's really for the person. It's for us to be like, yay. But sometimes other people like it. But also sometimes people are just like, I would rather just not hear anything from you if I can't know what it is. So I'm curious about what you all think. Um, I know for me, the second I see that vague whatever tweet, I'm going to forget about that in two seconds. Sometimes I know a little bit about more about the person and then I start to investigate and I make vague guesses about what their, <laughs> their secret news might be. And that's kind of fun. But I know this is not for everyone. So let me know. Poll below. Let me know what you think. So two things with progress with the horror trio. So the first thing is that I've finished drafting all the chapters that I need for this, which was six chapters. Um, I think they're terrible <laughs> because their first drafts just no atmosphere. The main character feels flat. I uh, just I'm missing things that I'm, I was supposed to put in that I missed when I was drafting. It's just I have to revise it. I have to revise it and it will get better. And I know that because that happens literally every time I write a book. But when you're facing down a first draft, you always think, oh my gosh, this is the worst and it's never going to be better. But it is going to be better and I'm going to make it better and it's going to be fine. So <laughs> that's that. And then the second thing is today I revised my pitches for the next two books in the trio and then also my synopsis. So the synopsis, you know what? I thought it was really, really terrible, but it's actually, it's doing everything it needs to do. It's doing everything it needs to do. It's saying all the things of the main plot that are important. It is doing the function of what it is meant to do. So I'm good with the synopsis. It's all revised now and I'm very happy with, you know, the idea of sending that to my agent. And then the two pitches, I was shocked, you know, because when I wrote those pitches, I was like, ah. but when I went back to revise them today, I was like, these are pretty good. Like I was all shocked, surprised. And, you know, I felt very good about them. I felt very proud. I think they are very good. Um, and I'm really excited because each book in this trio is really examining female friendships, but also like stereotypes about teen girls and things like that. And I feel like each book is doing it from a different angle, from a different lens, which is interesting. And each book has its own dynamic pitch to it. And so I feel like the pitch of each book is good on its own even if it was outside of this trio, which is exactly what I want because I want these to stand alone. <laughs> I want them to be seen and picked up by people as individual books, even though of course they have, you know, a thread that's running through them. So I'm very excited about that. So I think the proposal is coming together very well. And I'm very excited to announce that the proposal and my uh, sci-fi short story, which I'm going to work on towards the end of the month, but I will get to work on each of them on their own without working on another project at the same time. Because after being very anxious about emailing my editor to ask her when the bear hunt edits were come in, not from anything she did, literally because I did a magical thinking thing in my head where I thought that if I emailed her to ask when my edits would be coming, that she would suddenly perceive me and the edits would appear out of nowhere and she'd be like I have them right now and I got so in my head about thinking this is exactly what would happen to me if I asked her that I avoided asking her for like three days <laughs> oh it was terrible it was terrible anyway I eventually emailed her and it was actually fine she was like oh well, I was planning to get this to you um like in February and I was like perfect because even though February is when Delicious Monsters comes out and it's gonna be a busy time I it's I'm not really going to be working on anything else with the exception of edits on the proposal with my agent, but it's a proposal. It's not a large piece of work. And so I feel like those edits won't be super heavy and I could do those edits towards the end of February, towards the beginning of March, um, when I'm going to be most busy, but 
having the lighter edits um, and I could do the, the bear hunt stuff towards the beginning of the month. Anyway, it just works better. And I think this will still allow me to work on one project at a time, which is what I'm really hoping for this year. And already it's been better. And that really like took a weight off my shoulder. <laughs> but it's just so nice I feel like my days have been so balanced I've had so much time I've been doing all this sewing I've been trying to revive my plants now I've been doing some reading not as much reading as I want but that's okay but I've been doing some reading I've been doing some movement things like I feel like there is balance in my life and I feel so calm <laughs> and like everything is okay because I'm like, I'm just like working on one project at a time. I do a little work here, a little work there, and I'm good. And this is what I wanted. And this is a very stark difference <laughs> from like November, December, uh, October of last year, which was like, ah, I was like doing, working on what felt like three to five projects at all times. And now I'm like, things are real chill and I'm really happy with it. So I'm hoping I can keep this momentum and I will update you again next Friday. Hello! It is the end of the vlog and nearly the end of the month and as of today exactly a month away from the release of Delicious Monsters which I'm trying not to think too much about. It feels very very surreal um, but anyway I'm doing an update here. Um, sorry if it looks different I'm doing it on my phone because my camera died but I think it'll probably look fine knowing the quality of my phone camera but I'm here to update you on everything that has gone on in the month. So what should I start with? Let's start with what I just finished. So my short story for that anthology that hasn't been announced yet. So it's a middle grade sci-fi story. The characters are 14. So it's really like, I guess, like an upper between upper middle grade and lower YA, but has, I would say, more of a middle grade feel to it. So that one, I have finished up my edits on it. Really the big edits I had to do was that the boy, um, my editors felt that his arc was wrapped up a little bit too neatly and quickly and well not quickly but a little bit too neatly picture perfect sort of thing and so I was like okay um so I did an edit on that so I fleshed out a bit more of his character because I did originally have more to his character it's just when I was writing it because I was cognizant of the word count I think I cut out a lot of that and so I put that in and I created a little bit more of a conflict so that his arc wouldn't come together so neatly and perfectly though I don't know if they're still gonna think it's too neat and perfect so I don't know We'll see when I get that feedback. Um, so I did that. However, I've now gone over word count. Um, the editor, because I emailed and I was like, is it bad if it's over word count? Um, and so the editor said to just focus on making the story the best it could be right now and worry about word count later. So we will see if that <laughs> comes back to bite me later. But for now, I finished that and I sent that off, which is great. And then I I also finished and sent off the proposal for the horror trio, which is what I've been mostly working on this month. And so I sent that off to Christy and I can't remember if I said it before, but I feel good about the synopsis and I feel good about the pitch letters, but I am concerned <laughs> about the atmosphere and the tone in the sample. Um, I think I did in my revisions do a lot better at like making sure the characters are distinct and making sure the main character also feels sort of distinct because she's a sort of main character that's very like trying to mold herself into what she feels her friends will like. And so it's a little bit difficult because she's purposely kind of like pressing back her own personality and so 
I want readers to connect to her and I want her to have her own personality and I want you know you to feel connected to the POV character but the POV character is also like doing a certain molding of herself which is kind of similar to my main character in Bear Hunt which is my 2024 novel but it's a very different sort of dynamic I find um, with her um, but it's still creating that issue of <laughs> when you have a main character who's trying to suppress their own personality how do you make sure people connect to them so I feel like I did better with that but I really my struggle is with like I want it to feel creepy and unsettling and I want it to have that horror tone and I don't know if I'm quite nailing it but I sent it out to Christy anyway and I let her know that so she can be on the lookout um and I'll just kind of see what she says and this will also give me time and space away from it to kind of like chill out <laughs> and I'm hopeful that when I go back to it it'll be with fresher eyes and I'll be able to fix things up and get it to something that I really like and that I'm really proud of and that I'm really happy to present to my publisher so there is that and so that's done which I'm really happy about <laughs> and so right now I'm in a position of I do not have any kind of writing work actively going on at this time so I'll have a couple days off in January to myself but in February I'm gonna go ahead and jump into doing some research things for my adult horror or adult horror thriller at this point they're all, they all kind of toe the line I have some things for that that I'm gonna start doing research on but right now otherwise deadline wise I am waiting to get notes back for bear hunt from my editor again bear hunt is not the final title but you know that that's what we're calling it so i'm waiting to get edits back from her on that which i'll probably be working on in february so but speaking of february since delicious monsters is a month away from release now i've also this month been doing a lot of work to get content ready from for it so i started posting the blurbs that i've gotten from authors on mondays and then i've been trying to make like short video content to share on Fridays and so I've been doing a lot of cap cut stuff <laughs> to put together little like Instagram reels slash TikTok TikToks just TikToks <laughs> to share on those platforms um I guess I could also share them here on YouTube but it feels a little bit weird I don't know let me know what you think um so right now I'm just sharing them on Instagram and TikTok so if you aren't following me there you should if you want to see that stuff and um yeah so I've been working on that really hardcore and trying to get all of that ready <laughs> for next month so that I'm not having to do that stuff during February because I'm going to be launching a book and then I also got some assets from my publisher so they put together some quote graphics to me for me um, they sent me an animated cover sizzle reel thing and they're gonna send me like a playlist graphic as well so I've also been slotting those in and so I'm just kind of getting all those promo assets ready and as you saw I also sewed <laughs> outfits to wear at launches so I've been getting all of that ready as well so right now I'm feeling quite good I think because I was able to work on each of the projects I had this month one at a time and like give full focus to them and because I was only working on one project I had so much more spare time like I did all that sewing and I was able to do all these promotional things and so I actually I feel really calm going into February like part of me is like oh my gosh my book is coming out and that's like just my book is coming out panic but I actually in terms of things I have to do I'm feeling really chill right now I'm sure that'll change in early February when I actually have to start like going places and doing stuff but for right now I'm feeling really good about it and I'm really excited about my book coming out and yeah I'm excited for when it's when it's over like I love when the book comes out and I no longer have to anticipate the book coming out <laughs> because it's already out and I've already seen and everything has already happened and I can just like calm down so I'm really excited about that but yeah that's really it for January January has been really good and um yeah that's really it so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye